Hi everyone. Today we are going to do something very interesting with Raspberry Pi. So I'm pretty sure you will love this experiment and you will also try it out immediately. Hi, welcome to Kitflix. What we are going to do today is we are going to convert our Raspberry Pi, the beloved computer board into a complete gaming console. Now this gaming console can run almost all the retro games and I'm pretty sure you have heard about this concept. So this is my setup here. So I have Raspberry Pi right over here. I have a memory card from Raspberry Pi. I have a game controller to try out and this is a USB extender with the game controller receivers connected to it. I also have a keyboard and mouse, wireless keyboard and mouse in case if I need to connect it with Raspberry Pi. Lastly, this is most important. So not lastly, but I should tell it in advance. The memory card reader. So what we are going to do is we are going to convert this Raspberry Pi computer into a gaming console, connect this joy controller or game controller to it and try to play some games. So let's get started to see how it can be done. For it, first of all, I'll just insert this memory card into my card reader and then I'll connect it to my computer. <clears throat> Whatever it has, first I want to format it. So I'll do that in a minute, but let's first see how we need to do it. So this is done using an operating system distribution called RetroPie. All you need to do for RetroPie is go to retropie.org.uk or let's start from the beginning. You just search RetroPie on Google, go to the first link retropie.org.uk and here you need to go into the download section <coughs> and depending upon which Raspberry Pi you have, like I have Raspberry Pi 4. So just click on the distribution that is compatible with your Raspberry Pi. If you have a Raspberry Pi 2, 3 or W, then use this one or this one. So I'll just click on this and it will start downloading the Raspberry Pi image for me. It amounts to almost 900 MB. So for this video, I have already downloaded this file. Let's see what's next. Now, if you see, I already have in my downloads this file downloaded. RetroPie Buster 4 something something. The first thing you need to do is you need to unzip this. It's a zip file. So you simply need to unzip this. While this is being extracted, I'll open the Raspberry Pi Imager software. You can also download Raspberry Pi Imager from official Raspberry Pi website. I have other videos on it on Kitflix channel as well. Open Raspberry Pi Imager. The first thing you need to do is before even running or before even burning any new operating system, you need to format your memory card first. So let's do that first. This is Raspberry Pi Imager. Mine is older one. Need to update. We'll do that later. Now go to choose operating system. Simply select erase. Then choose your storage. It will show the memory card you have connected. And then write. So this is not writing something onto it. This is simply going to format your memory card. Once this formatting is done, what we need to do is we need to burn the image which we have just downloaded from the RetroPie website. Okay, now it has been erased. Let's try it out. Okay, it's it's done. Now let's look at our image if we have got that image sorted where was that downloads okay retro pie so we extracted this one let's see where it is here it is so you will find an image after extraction which looks something like this now we have formatted the memory card we have extracted the image all you need to do now is open raspberry pi imager again Choose operating system as custom, use custom. Here you will have to select this particular image. So just go to downloads and RetroPie Buster 4.8. So the key here is to find out that .img file. It should be .img file. Open this image, choose your storage as your memory card and click on write. Now, while this writing is being done, let me show you what things I have. So currently, the memory card is being written. 
After, what I'll do after that is I'll insert that memory card into Raspberry Pi and then I'll connect this HDMI cable to my monitor. Having a monitor or a TV is a must for this experiment. After all, we are not creating any embedded project, but we are trying to play some games and without a display, you won't be able to play games. Also make sure that you use the official Raspberry Pi adapter for this experiment. I have this Red Gear Make Xbox compatible controller, which is very easily and widely available. However, if you don't have this one, you can definitely use the keyboard for playing the games onto it. This particular image, RetroPie, supports a wide variety of game emulators. So, we'll see that in a moment. All those different game emulators have different ROMs which you can use with them. You just need to copy those ROMs and then you can start playing those games over here. Now, as you can see, writing is completed. Verification is not that important. So, let me cancel the verification. And I am done here with the RetroPie installation on my memory card. Now, close this utility over here. What you need to do now is, I will show you my camera. So, now I have removed the memory card reader from computer. I'll take this memory card out and insert it into Raspberry Pi. Then I have the monitor connected to the same one, the same monitor that I'm showing you this display on or the screen on. And then I have this extension cable connected where I'm going to connect the keyboard and mouse and the game controller receiver is already there. You will see two receivers, don't be confused because I have two different controllers, so I just don't remove it, that's all. Now, let's power it on and let's see how it looks on the monitor. Now, I'm powering on my computer or Raspberry Pi system with the memory card into it and you will see this video into the second feed. It will take some time for the first time boot whenever you do it. So just look at the messages that goes on. It will also show you partitioning system and all those things or different types of messages. All you need to do is let it finish. Let it come to this splash screen and then we'll continue with the operation. So in the first boot, it will for sure ask you to configure your controller. As I have this Xbox compatible controller, I will configure it in my first boot. Let's wait for the booting process to be finished. Once it's done, it will start the emulation station, which is what is actually playing our games. And then it will ask you to configure your controller. Yeah. Now see, okay, I want to configure this one. So let's just hold a button for some time. Now D pad up. I want to configure this like this, D-pad down, D-pad left, D-pad right. Start, I want to use this start button itself. Select, I want to use this button over here. Button A, let's use the A itself. Button B, button X, button Y. Left shoulder, right shoulder, left trigger, right trigger, left thumb, pressing this one, right thumb, left analog up, down, left, right, right analog up, down, left, right. And this hotkey is very important. I'll choose this middle one because this hotkey resets your system. Now this is done. I'll just press A for OK and then the system will start. <laughs> now the configuration is done for keyboard. Now the next configuration we need to do is here. Now I am using this one, okay, like this. So what I said is we need to configure Wi-Fi. I will go to Wi-Fi. The system will say your Wi-Fi country is not selected. So we'll first need to select the Wi-Fi country. At this point, I'm going to zoom it in a little bit. Yeah. 
Do you want to launch Raspberry Config for you now? Yes, we do. Here I will go to localization options. I'm using keyboard to select this. Then I'll go to WLAN country. And then I'll select because I am in India. So select the country that you are in. You might need to scroll down a bit too much to get the one you want. Okay. Now, let me finish it. Would you like to reboot now? Uh, yes, we will have to because that's where we'll start using the Wi-Fi. Let me zoom it out again. You will see the blank monitor. You'll again see the booting process. Now, the country is selected. So what we need to do next is we need to enable the Wi-Fi and connect it to the Wi-Fi system or the Wi-Fi network. After that, you can copy games onto it. Now the Retropie is booting up. It gets its Wi-Fi uh, IP address and it also shows it on the configuration screen. Let me show you where that comes from. Since you have configured your controller, you can use it for general navigation just like a mouse. Just like you do on any gaming system or gaming operating system. Okay. Now this is the menu. Okay. By default, it shows you the RetroPie configuration or there are left right options currently there are no games therefore it's not showing anything on left right it's only showing you the retropie configuration so let me go into retropie configuration and now i'll again go to wi-fi here i will enable the wi-fi and connect it with an existing network let me zoom it in a bit for you okay, what we need to do is connect to wi-fi okay i'll just hit enter Scanning for existing Wi-Fi networks. This one is mine, Robotics Lab. Okay. Give your password. In case your keyboard is not set, then you will not find the at the red symbol. In that case, you can simply use this on-screen keyboard. It's simpler. Now that's it. Okay. Just wait. After you click OK, it takes some time to connect to Wi-Fi. Don't think that it's hanged or maybe broken or something like that. No, it just takes some time at this point. So let it complete that. It will connect. Yeah. So now you can note this 192.168.0.132. That's my Wi-Fi IP address. Why you need this? I'll tell you in a bit. Exit from this position. We again got into configuration section over here. Now, what I need to do is I simply need to copy my games onto the Raspberry Pi system. So I'll change my screen to my computer. With RetroPie, good thing is you have a built-in file manager. So all you need to do is go to your uh, Windows manager and simply hit backward slash RetroPie. And it will open the file manager of your system. Here, what you need to do is you need to go into ROMs. Okay. And inside the ROMs, you need to copy the game ROM wherever they are compatible. So I have some ROMs. These are all 8-bit games. So the Nintendo Entertainment System or NES gaming system. I'll just copy them into NES here. That's that. Now let me just change my view again to Raspberry Pi. Now my games have been installed. All I need to do now is restart the system once and I'm good to go. So quit. Let's go to configuration. Okay. 
restart system or you can just restart emulation email station and then let's see what will happen is it will completely restart and now the games that we have added they will show as a category here can you see that now previously we were only seeing the retro pie option here and its configurations now we can see nintendo entertainment system and six games available no other thing so if you go to retro pie and wait there it just shows configuration option now if you go to nes or nintendo entertainment system it will show the six games options simply click on your a key and you will go here now what i'm going to play might make you a little bit nostalgic let me know in the comments if you like this game as a child or not i do play things with my kids and uh, he loves this so this is contra i'm pretty sure people will remember about this one good thing about uh, this retro pie is it supports multiple emulators in single place so you can play 8-bit games you can play 16-bit games you can also play 32-bit and a lot of different console games including playstation 1 and playstation 2 and believe me playstation games are real fun when it comes to multiplayer gaming so that's that i know the video is quite long you will have to i'll create more videos on how to make this full screen and any other tricks or trips that are related to retro pie one important aspect is you had to select the hotkey so when you want to reset this there is no other way okay the keyboard won't work the mouse won't work so what you need to do is click on your hotkey which i have configured to home and then i need to click on the start button both together will reset the system you can click b and you can come back to your home system this is important so home and start button that's it thank you for watching this video